Hello. Hello. Welcome to Vulture Festival. Thank you guys for coming. I am uh, Vulture Senior Editor and the Vulture Festival Executive Producer, Jesse David Fox. We're so excited to have you here. Uh, Vulture Festival is in its third year in Los Angeles, and I hope we enjoy hope you enjoy seeing Vulture Fest, uh, Vulture's pop culture coverage come to life. I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor, AT&T, as well as our official sponsors, Heineken, Mailchimp, and Virgin Voyagers. And also thank you to our media partners, Screen Vision and Sears XM. Uh, before we get to it, a quick reminder that pictures and posting are encouraged, uh, but use the hashtag Vulture Festival, hashtag Vulture Festival. Uh, and we ask you, please silent your phones and refrain from taking flash photography and videos. Um, Welcome to the reunion of Party Down. <laughs> so uh, 10 years ago, I was living in Los Angeles, and I was working as a caterer. And someone goes, you have to check out this show. You'd really like it. Uh, and I did, and I did. And that show uh, was Party Down. Uh, so everyone's there. <laughs> but, to uh, remind those who uh, need a little reminder, we're going to play a little sizzle, and then they're going to come out, and we're going to talk about uh, Party Down. Does that sound good, everybody? Play the sizzle. It's actually Steve Gutenberg. Hot Jewishy much? No wonder he changed it to dancing. What are you, like 48? Wow. Okay, well, you, you did it on the set of Hooper. Oh. That was 30 years ago. Don't remind me. Yeah. Dum, dum, dum. I got the dead end job, girl. I got the dead end job. What kind of accent is that? The blues accent. Dragons are fantasy. Hey, it's still my birthday. I'm not doing anything. You know what? Invite your friends. We'll have a party. Oh, no. Yeah, unless you've got other plans. What? Oh, my God. It's <laughs> other plans? Are you kidding me? Partying oh with God. the good. Is that all she is to you? A face? What the fuck was that? Dude, I'm acting. Okay, back in. Uh, so I guess you're up one. Yeah. Sorry. Except not really, because I made out with her. You did? A little bit. Did you? Oh, oh, oh. Ow. One time I got revenge on someone by putting tuna fish in the AC vents of her car, but then we ended up carpooling. What? <laughs> so you better be careful, because sometimes revenge backfires and you end up with a fish smell. My mouth is dry. Is that a Chardonnay or Reese that you have there? White wine. Oh, my God. I get so because every time a pretty girl walks by, he's like, and just flexes her. <laughs> Rocky! Oh! Run! Run! Those days, working gigs, making squat, just a bunch of struggling actors goofing around. Best time of my life. Oh, really? Love it. Better than when you were one of the biggest stars in America? Better than now? Well, maybe not the best time. I'm gonna save the galaxy. And scene. Welcome to the stage. Come on, everyone. Rob, Rob Thomas, Adam Scott, Lizzie Kaplan, Megan Mullally, Ken Marino, John M. Bob, Jane Lynch, Brian Hansen, Martin Starr, and Dan Edwards. Whip, 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 whip. 
There's a bag of hair behind Lizzie. That's my wig from Party Down. So at the end of the thing, I'm going to see who I think was the biggest fan, and I'm going to throw it out there. Is it really? Yeah, I bought oh, it on wow. Hollywood Boulevard for $39.99. That. That's totally true. Totally ruined that. I really did. So uh, when was the last time you guys were all together and seen each other? Just backstage. And, and then so you before know, that, then? You know what? Actually, at my birthday party last year, almost everybody, except Ryan, who is very, very elusive, was at that. And I have Jane, a lot of children, Jane, so. Jane, oh, and Jane Jane I don't think there. I was invited. No, Ooh. <laughs> I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Do you I'd guys like to, have... I'd like to get to know you well enough to invite you to my birthday party. But we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> I'm in the doghouse now. Do you guys have text chains? Are you guys constantly... Are, are we there... made party down before there were cellular phones. <laughs> That's true. That's, That's true. true. So we don't know how to... Yeah. I think we did... We, ha we had an email chain for a long time. Mm -hmm. But y you're right. Text chains weren't a thing while we were making the show. No, we were on clamshell flip phones. That's right. When we're done here, we're going to start a, a text chain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, have any of you guys watched the show recently? Not in forever. I have not. But I know people who have. Does yeah, that yeah. count? And they told you what it was like? Yeah. They loved it. They loved yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> Good. We're gonna, we'll walk through all of it, and we'll be a nice refresher for you guys as well as the audience. Um, so I had everyone tell me their favorite episodes and scenes uh, from the series, but I want to sort of take a moment and talk about the beginning to give some context. So from what I understand, the story started uh, with you watching the British office. <laughs> uh, right. Um, I, a British ex-girlfriend of mine emailed me and said, hey, you've got you've, you've to watch this show. And I, fe I, I felt like I had been steered wrong on shows by her before. Like I, <laughs> I didn't get into Ab Fab or uh, there were a few others. Shame on I know, you. I know. <laughs> And so I, I recorded it, and it sat there, and I thought, okay, I want to be able to say I watched it. And so in that first scene of Ricky Gervais hiring a forklift driver, like, my jaw was on the floor. I, um, <laughs> like, I, I watched that show, and I, and I called Dan and John, and I said, I think I've watched the best show of all time. Come watch it with me. And, and so it was showing on BBC America, and Dan and John would come over, as would Paul Rudd, uh, who was our other co-creator, who is not here today. And, um, and we'd watch the last week's episode and then watch the, the new episode. And, and, it, and never in my career had I thought, I want to write a comedy. But this, like, sad comedy, a sad comedy called out to us. I mean, in John Enbaum, we had the saddest, funniest person I knew. <laughs> And Mostly sad. I, I got better. I was better. <laughs> and so by the end of it, we, were, we just said, we want to write a comedy in this tone, essentially. And then, so why that is then Hollywood caterers? And why, I think it's that people have chased dreams for far too long. Where's the next step? Um... I hosted a lot of parties, um, <laughs> had a lot of, I mean, th the idea of being able to drop into a new party each week um, uh, seemed like a funny I idea to me. Like, I mean, when you host parties in LA, do you tend to get uh, people who are not, whose life ambition is not to be <laughs> waiting on people at your party? Um, Were any of, anyone here a caterer? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sucks. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I played in a band in Texas um, before I did this, and and all of my bands. friends. So, oh. is that for his band or for yeah, Texas? For bands. <laughs> it's definitely not for my band. Um, a bunch but, of band fans here. <laughs> you guys like bands? Yeah, yeah, bands. Bands, are great. yes. Yeah, bands, man, they're great. But you know, we started writing it around the time we were turning 40 or close to 40 or whatever. And, and that was the time all my friends back home were trying to decide, is it, do you give up the dream or do you keep going? And that, that idea of how long do you chase a dream uh, was interesting to us. So the, the path from that to stars is a particularly long uh, and windy one. I wonder if any of the creators could, as quickly as possible, summarize that for those who don't know the story of how it ended up on stars. Well, what did we do? We went to HBO first with Paul Rudd. Yeah. 
Yep. And they bought it before we got through the door when they saw Paul. Um, <laughs> and then, like, I think a week or two later, Paul was like, oh, I, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, you know, we sort of parted ways with HBO also because I think, you know, we wanted something very kind of... Well, I down, think specifically... Downbeat and we, small. We, we turned in uh, an outline that we've been working on, the four of us, for years that we loved. And the first out of the gate when we got to the note session was uh, HBO said, we know how hard it is to be funny in an outline, so, so don't, don't worry. <laughs> so it, we felt like writing was on the wall fairly quickly there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, HBO, I think, yes. bought it thinking that we were going to be very inside Hollywood, which is something that they like to do. And we turned in this outline to the first episode, which was a Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Homeowners Association <laughs> potluck. <laughs> that did not turn them on. Uh, and, and then uh, we took it to um, FX, and we had a great development process with them. We wrote the original Party Down script for uh, FX, uh, and then at the end of the day, they decided it doesn't fit well with It's Always Sunny, and they, they passed on it. It sat in our collective drawers for two years, uh, and then we decided to shoot a pilot in my house uh, and then actually shop the DVD, and, and we went to our favorite people to ask if they would do it for $100 a day. Um, and this is who we could afford. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't actually afford me. I came on later. <laughs> yeah, I record. also was too expensive to be a part of that backyard pilot. But I think I actually paid to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for letting me pay. Didn't didn't it happen um, after Veronica Mars uh, was? Uh, canceled, and then you still you took the crew and brought them to your house. Did something like that happen, or my yeah? And that that, that final season, we were supposed to do 22 episodes, and they cut our order back to 20. So we there were a couple extra weeks where people were available, and so we yeah. used a lot of that crew and shot it. But we wanted because we had pitched it other places, and it's such a simple log line that, you know, cater waiters, every episode is a party, everyone had a completely different idea for what the show could be. So I think part of the thing we wanted to do was just say like, no, it's like this. Um, and, you know, that led us almost nowhere <laughs> until... Um, yeah, we went around town, we went to every network that was doing comedy and showed them our, you know, our cut final episode, which we were really pretty pleased with. We, we thought it was funny and good. Uh, we, the people at Comedy Central did not. Um, we went into Comedy Central, and they, all these young executives came in with popcorn and excited and chattering and happy to be there, and it was 30 minutes without a laugh. We, we were not... And then we, uh, we went to Showtime. Uh, Showtime watched it, and they guffawed the whole, like... There was no way they weren't buying it. They loved it. They ate it up in the room. And at the end of it, uh, the head of Showtime said, uh, I don't know how to market this show. And we were dead there. Stars was literally, Stars at the time uh, had never done their own television show. Um, it was an agent, of mine said, an agent of mine who said, let's send it to Stars. They want to start doing indie comedy sort of stuff. And luckily, uh, they said, yeah. So it really was our last, our last stop. But we didn't even, they, like, they didn't have a comedy on the air yet at that time. But wasn't it about a year after you, you, you actually shot it? Because I remember you, you shot it, went around with it, nothing happened. Then you put a sizzle reel together. Then, then I never heard anything. And then about a year later, when we were doing Children's Hospital, I got a call, and you guys... We're like, hey, we're doing 10 episodes at Stars. Like, it, it, was, a, it was a while, right, before yeah. it got actually picked up? Yeah, we shot it spring of 07 and then started the show, like, November or December of 08. So it was, like, a full year and a half. Is that correct? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Appreciate you uh, really just sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Throughout all of that, what did you learn about the show, having it, having it be a thing that you were thinking about for so many years... What did you learn about that you were like, oh, we'll be ready to hit the ground running? Since the first episode is so, the first, immediately, I think for a comedy, it, it really understands what it is. Any of you? 
I mean, I think, you know, steeping that long with those particular characters, I think, was the thing that at the end of the day made all the difference. Like, you know, once we had to actually do the show, we could actually churn it out, you know, we, because what did we have? We had like two months to sort of write the season when they actually asked. Um, but we kind of were so familiar with everybody, we could actually just crank it out um, just because we'd sat with it for so long and talked about it for so long and, you know, done all that sort of thing. We had to kind of make up how to shoot it, but, you know, we were able to actually write it and kind of produce and direct it or whatever, you know, with a fair amount of confidence just because we'd, you know, we'd been with it for, like, years. So uh, you mentioned the cast, and the show is perfectly cast. I feel like it's, it's a matter of both getting the right people, but also the people bringing the right thing to it. So I wanted to go through the characters and talk a little bit about how you cast them and also what the actors saw when they saw the, the parts. I'll go in order in what I believe is how it was cast. So uh, Henry Pollard, which is uh, played by Adam Scott. You! <laughs> yes, cheer you! each time. You! You! <laughs> why, why was uh, Adam right for an Adam lie? What did you see in? No, keep keep going. Keep doing. You. Yeah. <laughs> Drooled. Uh... Sorry, did you? Sorry. Yeah. So yes. So sorry, why sorry, sorry. why was Adam right for it? And Adam, what what did you see in Henry that you're like, oh, I can do this? Or what made you interest? Do I have part A? Of we that? have part A. <laughs> part A for the creators, Got and it. part B will be for the actors. We're gonna do this for each of you. So watch out, this goes. <laughs> um. So far, it's going great. Yeah. <laughs> um, John Dan, feel free to jump in here. Um, with you know, with the Henry character, we wanted somebody who felt like um, they came out to Hollywood, you know, with bright-eyed and excited to conquer the world. And what we were really interested in is having the character at the center of the show be done with it, be world-weary, be cynical, be jaded. That's, that said Adam Scott to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I was, it, when they asked me to do the, the homemade pilot, um, I had been hearing about it from Rob and Dan and John and Paul for years, so I kind of vaguely knew the whole thing, and I think you guys also maybe Carell was attached at one point, and 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 I was maybe gonna be Roman. Is that right? Like early, early on, like right when you guys were. Yeah, when it was at HBO, the idea was, uh, yeah, Carell as Ron. Uh, sorry, Ken. If Can you even I knew, imagine I how amazing it would have been? This is been. not news to me. <laughs> Paul Rudd oh, yeah, Steve at, Carell? as Henry. Much better. Oh my God, it's Steve yeah. Carell. Yeah. I want to see that show. Murderer's yeah. Row. Well, we, yeah. Anyway, so. Q&A would be at the Dolby. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple years later, when it kind of when you guys were going to make the thing, I was really excited also to 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 be able to play that that role, and and uh, it was just sort of a no-brainer to do it because I, it's not like I had an acting, another acting job to <laughs> select this from the uh, crowded field of nominees. So uh, it was super fun and, and we were all friends anyway. So, you know, it was, it was great and not thinking, I wasn't really thinking this would ever continue. I just thought it would be fun. And, and I think as Rob was saying, the sort of jaded, cynical, like I had been around long enough to know that this will probably never happen, for real. Uh, so we just had fun doing it. Um, Ronald, Wayne, Ron, Donald. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so casting, after Steve Carell, uh, made 40-year-old virgin, was now unavailable. <laughs> what comes next? Well, I think with a lot of the, uh, what was the great thing is with a lot of the people we cast, we not only had worked with them, but we also knew them socially as well. So we've done a sense of their vibe as human beings. And, and Ken, we had been lucky enough to work with as Vinnie Van Lowe on Veronica Mars yeah. and knew him socially. <laughs> so, uh, post Corel, one-stop shopping, right there. <laughs> 
uh, 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 me now? Um, so we were working on Veronica Mars, and uh, you were talking about this script. This is how I remember it. And I said, ooh, can I read it? And I read it in my trailer while I was waiting to shoot. And then when I finished reading it, I th the way I remember it is I went up to you and I said, I don't know if you guys are ever going to do this, but if you do do it, can I please audition for Ron? And then, um, then I never heard anything back. And then they were, uh, and then they, and then when Veronica Mars got canceled, and then you were doing it at your house, you guys gave me a call and asked uh, me to do it, and I went out and had a nice uh, uh, one on one diner uh, lunch with you. Yeah, at the and, thing. And at the thing, and then we t uh, talked about it, and then I got to do it. And Ron, in the original one, had a little mustache. That's right. And then we, and we black to, ties. And, a, and do we have black ties? We didn't we have had pink black ties. Black ties. What? Why the switch to pink ties? Uh, uh, costume actually, designer, yeah, right? costume yeah. designer just said they. I, I think can I, specifically, can I say that, Jane, what I said earlier, I don't know. Yeah, I think initially Star's response. <laughs> this was an earlier time. Was those are too gay. <laughs> <laughs> that was they didn't really varnish the note. They just gave us that note, <laughs> and so we kept them. We, we did not get a lot of notes from stars. We were literally the, the first show they had done in-house. The, the thing that they mostly wanted to ensure was a certain number of, of naked breasts uh, like that. <laughs> That was like their one requirement. Hope, and hopefully, an even number. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Five and, naked and breasts so per episode. Would, we would save it for the reboot. And then the, they would follow that note with knowing because John was running the show and not sad breasts. I mean, they, they, they didn't. They did not want sad nudity. It couldn't. Which. They were right to give that note. <laughs> I saw a woman on one of the nude episodes, and she was a, like a background artist doing nudity, which I think is like the pinnacle of bravery, like for real. And I saw her, and she looked like she had sad boobs. Not because they were like unattractive breasts, but because she was sitting there picking something off of them for a very long time. Yes. That was probably a producer's note. You were I... on set, and you're like, have her pick her breast. <laughs> Yeah, I remember being in a scene with uh, the orgy, yeah. uh, and there were, oh, I was on a bed with somebody, you'd think I'd remember, um, and there were all these other naked people like making out all around me, and I was like, oh, this is a little too real for me. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do believe that an email or, or text message chat went out uh, when we all realized that Stormy Daniels had, had guest starred in Party Down. Like that, they were like, holy shit! Do you remember Stormy Daniels? In the, which the episode? In the Porn Awards episode. She's the one who uh, uh, fillets, fillets me, or tries to. I, I, I went to, so I was in New York, just a quick story. I was in New York and I was shooting, uh, and, and um, uh, I got invited to- You get to it, you go, were in go, New York. No, cool. there's more to it than that. And uh, I, I got invited to uh, go, hang, go watch the okay, rehearsal of SNL. Okay, you got invited to SNL. And so I was walking backstage, and it was the episode where Stormy Daniels was in the cold open. And, and so I was walking down the hallway, and I see her like come out of her room, and she sees me, and she's like, hey! And I didn't know if she <laughs> remembered the thing. And I'm like, and so, was, but then I, I remember, because we were the, the text chain uh, that was going on. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my god, hey! How are you? What have you, what have you been up to? <laughs> and, she, and she looks at me and she's like... <gasps> and I'm like, oh yeah, right, of course, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> True story. It's so funny, I would not have remembered that Stormy Daniels was on the show. Who, who was it that... Uh, Martin. It was Martin that was like, hey, she was on the show? Or was it... <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was. <laughs> Constance Carmel. <laughs> Somebody you. jump in there. <laughs> why Jane and then why? Jane, why the part? Well, um, 
I just loved how stupid she was and how earnest. <laughs> and um, I knew I wanted to work with these guys. I, do you guys remember I did, I did a guest star oh, on yes, uh, Veronica I, I, Mars? I do remember. A two-episode guest star. Yes, and um, so bragging. I had met them, and I really liked them, and um, so I was very happy to be invited to be a part of it. And I remember showing up for my $100 a day job, <laughs> and we all dressed, boys and girls alike, in your bedroom, all at the same That's time. That's right. It was so, That's like, it was right. so That's summer illegal. stock. That's illegal. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. Matt, we didn't wear the bow ties. The girls wore the little, like, the, the girls in the Navy. I don't know. Anyway, wait, what? We, it I don't was like it that. was like the little uh, grade school ties the girls wore, the, like, the, the, that crossover like that that the Navy ladies wear. Uh, the, the the thing about cast that you uh, being in Veronica Mars that was em embarrassing to me at the time was uh, we had gone out, we wanted someone for this role and we had written a Jane Lynch type next to it <laughs> and and then. We go into a casting session, and Jane Lynch walks in. Like, if I knew she was available, we, we would have... You, you didn't have to read Jane for a Jane Lynch type. It's usually the kiss of death. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Bradway. Yeah. Oh, you sound so bad. Ew. Oh. Relax. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also on Veronica Mars, I played Dick. <laughs> and we got, uh, we, uh, the third season ended, and my wife and I took this big vacation and blew all of our money. And then uh, I got an email from Rob. We were in Rome. And, um, and he's like, hey, uh, sorry, Veronica Mars is canceled, but read this script. And uh, let me know if you want to do it. And I emailed right away. I didn't even read it. I'm like, I'll do it. You know? um, and I feel like it was the part I was born to play, Kyle Bradway. So... <laughs> Couldn't pass that up once I finally read it uh, <laughs> when I got there on set. I think it's my favorite character name of, an, again, a crowded field of, of, of great character names. I think Kyle Bradway. <laughs> Do you guys remember where that came from? Or I'm going to guess John. John. Yeah. John is the master of, of names. <laughs> I, I just wish, like, it would entertain me just to read down the names of the cater waiters at Valhalla catering like the the rival catering and they were like yeah. dune yeah. <laughs> hail right yeah. yes. they were those were some great names they were all so gorgeous oh my too. god <laughs> yeah, they really were roman de beer yeah <laughs> all right all right so as you mentioned <laughs> he was not in the the pilot you shot how did he then how did you end up being in and why and why Martin? Yeah, why'd you fi fire the other guy? <laughs> Ooh, <boy>. Oh, <laughs> that other guy has worked many, many times for he's us. He's terrific. We, he's yeah. a fantastic. But not on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, really. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice so aggressive. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, well, for one thing, I love freaks and geeks. Almost like no other show. I... Yeah. Oh, right. Thanks. And so I was already a Martin and Lizzie fan um, when these roles came open. We were all fans. And no one up here had to read for, the, <laughs> for their part. They were all people we were fans of. Why did you respond to the why? Uh, my character also said a Martin Starr type. <laughs> And my agent read it and said, hey, I think I found something. <laughs> They're real detectives where I used to be represented. I love their relationship, these two. They were like brothers and you were constantly beating each other up. I and, know, I'm waiting I mean, for the real slaps hard, open the, yeah. hand slaps. And yeah. Like really hurt me every day. Yeah, like, he would punching really your shoulder me. and... Yep. Uh. <laughs> Did you guys find that rhythm naturally? Did you, when you met, you immediately were hitting each other? Martin found that very naturally. <laughs> Some people just deserve it. <laughs> uh, I feel like we all got, a, we all just hit a chemistry stride almost yes. immediately, and it became obvious that we were all gonna get along based on how we all kind of pitched and created moments for each other. There was a very unselfish comedic 
um, tendency throughout. And we sh did shoot it in a bubble. We didn't get any um, notes from network, and uh, nobody knew what was happening. And we were just showing up at all these weird locations every day. And it was truly a, a blessed time. It was it was the most truly the most fun I've ever had doing a job. Yep. And and we all started smoking together. Yeah. Remember that <laughs> we we would all smoke, and and we loved coming to work. And uh, you know, it was just a really great time. It was great, kind of that feeling that, the you know, it had, by the time we finished the first season, nothing had aired, so like you said, it was in a bubble. We didn't know how many people were going to end up seeing this, so we were just kind of making it for ourselves. It turns out we really were making it just yeah, for ourselves. Yeah, we, we really did, for a number of years. Yeah. It, it really, I, I saw like a, a viewership for, for us once when we were on the air that should 65,000 viewers, um, which I, I'd never seen a number that low <laughs> on, on network television. Like, um, although we were cruising right along until uh, stars did Spartacus. Spartacus killed us as much as anything when they thought, oh, we have a new model. They'll give us breasts every week and blood. <laughs> and they won't be sad breasts. <laughs> they, will not, they were not. Uh, so, as, as we mentioned, Lizzie was added after, how did, and I believe, Adam, you helped recruit her, and please... Lizzie! <laughs> Lizzie Kaplan! Yee! Yeah, um, I think we, it was a long casting process, and then at a certain point, we uh, brought up Lizzie as sort of a, again, a thing that probably, that wasn't, we weren't going to be able to get Lizzie, but we... No, seriously, and like we didn't think that would be possible, but we shared an agent, so I thought we could just give it a shot. Th there there are, <clears throat> it, you know, being in network and studio pitch and casting sessions, there is there are very few actors who have more of a reputation of saying no to things than Lizzie. Yes, <laughs> I mean that is very true. I'm very proud of that. Yes, <laughs> you, yeah. you, and so yeah, it did feel like a a long shot. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I remember hearing about it. I think I got cast like very, like there was maybe the weekend before. We yeah, started. it was on a Friday and we started shooting Monday. Yeah, and you called me for your big pitch, which... Because <laughs> um, our, our agent in common was like, you're going to have to talk to her and sell her on this because, you know, it's... <laughs> Just imagine. It was like... <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Well, I had to try and play it cool, and I, I think... I hey, Adam maybe... Scott here. How you doing, Lizzie? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I thought it went great, but it, it kind of didn't. It was... There were many pauses. Yeah. <laughs> Long pauses. I don't... I mean, I think I was a, tr it was like a holiday job. It was, you know, it was around the end of the year. It was 10 episodes, 10 weeks. And Jane, for me, it was Jane Lynch was in it. Sorry, everybody. Um, which was enough for me because they certainly didn't pay us anything. No. I mean, nothing. I'm sorry I didn't invite her to my birthday party because yeah. then you could have seen her there too. <laughs> No, I really feel bad. <laughs> Next one, right? Huh? Next one, yeah. yeah look, no, I think right. it really was like, since we, we weren't I, getting paid anything, so it was just essentially, it I think might I got paid the fun, least, too, right? by the way, because all the money was gobbled up by you guys. So I really, like, <laughs> I remember how much I got paid. Well, that's what I we got paid, too. I got it paid. was favored nations, I think. I think no, we all got was the it? same. We yeah, all got we, nothing. We, we all got paid for shit. Al yeah. Almost, almost. On the count of three, say how much you got paid, bro. I don't remember, I just know it was low. Yeah. You'd remember. How much did you get paid? <laughs> oh yeah, I got more than that. <laughs> That's Jane, Jane took all the crazy. money. I, I took all the money, we just figured it out. It's nuts, it's nuts, it's nuts. Wow, I can't believe you did it. I know. 
<laughs> but again, it was like there was nothing else to do. It's like you could do this thing for t and and I liked enough of the elements, but I and the no phone call, the phone and of call, course, the sold phone it. call really pushed it over Back the finish. Back then, it was line. unusual to only ha do ten episodes. Yeah, you know, and it was. I, s I think I saw the backyard pilot, and there was just enough. It was just it was a cooler time for comedy. You could like make interesting stuff, and yes, it very much felt like. I mean, little did I know when I signed on. I thought it would just be yeah. I've known Martin forever. I you know th this sounds kind of fun, but like was already said, it it uh, nothing prepared me You've for what it Martin actually. You've known Martin since like second or third grade. Yeah, right? since we were seven. Me and Martin have known each other. Not to brag. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But it ended up being, like, I had no idea that it would end up being, like, just how special it, it was. I mean, it, Our relationship? Yeah. Yes. I knew when I first saw Martin, age seven, he was already an actor. He appeared in the movie Hero with Dustin Hoffman. He played a boy in a full-body cast. I said, if God, as God is my witness, I will work with that boy. And here we are today. The end. <laughs> And last but not least, Lydia Dunfrey. Well, um, you know, when we lost Jane, and, and sometimes, um, you know, I've seen this written up, um, Jane had already done the Glee pilot before, um, before she did Party Down, and the Glee was in a holding pattern. We knew we could lose her at any time and we ended up losing her after eight episodes the first time around and Jennifer Coolidge came in and was wonderful for, for us. And because all, all of our scripts were written in advance, we really just kind of had Jennifer Coolidge do Jane's part. I mean that, <laughs> and so when we started the next season, we felt like, okay, we should create a new character. And we were talking about, okay, how are we gonna do this? And the idea of a stage mom came up uh, and uh, we had heard that Megan wanted to do the show, that like that had come, that she was a fan of the show and she would love to guest star in an episode. And we, so we I reached out to Adam we could, and I had the same manager. Yeah. And that's how you knew that. Yeah. You get a phone call? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Megan, it's Adam Scott. <laughs> I do remember when I heard that Megan was a fan of the show, I immediately emailed everybody that Megan Mal this is a famous person that had seen the show. <laughs> it was huge news that she was a fan of the show. Like, it may have been the first person that we knew had ever watched the show. <laughs> so we were like, we can, how about 10 guest star uh, appearances? Um, yeah, that um, was very fortunate for us, yeah. Yeah, I was so excited when I, <laughs> when I heard. Um, I think I got $9,000 an episode. I'm pretty sure. It might have been seven. <laughs> yeah. Get more than that on Will Is and Grace. Is that close within the ballpark of what you get on Will and Grace? It's very close, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get 10 for Will and Grace. A minute. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, it was, I remember it so well because it was September of 2009 and I, I went to the first day and it was so fun and, um, and we had a little dinner before and um, I thought everybody was really nice. And, in Glendale. But it, it was weird coming in after they'd already done a season with Jane and everything and yeah, in Glendale, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why was it in Glendale? Does anybody know? Yeah, so I, I went the first day and it was really fun and then um, I was driving to work the next day and I got blindsided at an intersection by a, a woman, some woman, and I broke my wrist. And uh, I had to go to the hospital and I called and it was like a thing and they were like, well, just don't come in. You know, you don't have to come in today. We'll, we'll work around it. And then I went in the next day and they were like, you're back. And I was like, yeah, I... I mean, I have a cast, but I'm back, and they were like, we thought you were trying to quit. <laughs> it, was, it was a story. It was a, you, know, you were in a car accident, and you couldn't do the show anymore. That's so sad, you guys. 
That's really sad that everybody was convinced that I was trying to find a way out. But it's great. You can watch that episode now and watch two thirds of it. Megan finds the most amazing way to never show that cast during the. Yeah, like my arms behind a door. Or... And isn't Funny. your daughter? Isn't wasn't your daughter Caitlin Deaver? Yeah. Who's now Escapade? Escapade. Yeah, she's amazing. Book smart. Book, but yeah, book smart and lots of other stuff. But yeah. Her name was Escapade. Another great uh, John name. Escalade. Yeah. Escalade. 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 No, Escapade. Escapade. Es escapade. She's in Book Smart. She's uh, fucking amazing. And un <laughs> unbelievable I seen, I is the show, books. right? The other, yeah. So as I mentioned, we're gonna. You, I had you all pick your favorite episodes, and we're gonna go through and see what you guys remember. So first up is. Let's see if this works. Yes, season one, episode three, <laughs> Pepper McMaster's single cemetery, and this was Jane's choice. I love this. <laughs> what, why, what, why did you Oh, like I'm waiting for it to go. Um, well, uh, getting high with Adam in the bathroom was so much fun. We were at that, uh, what is it, the Salvation Army thing? What is that, it's on Highland? No, it's yeah. The, 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 uh, the Lodge? V VFW. The American VFW. Legion. Yeah. Right, exactly. And um, so <laughs> we were putting drops in our eyes to make our eyes red. And then my favorite moment is when Ken comes in as Ron Donald and he talks about the dangers of pot smoking. <laughs> and he shows us a picture and says, look what it did to my friend. And we're looking at it and, and um, Adam says, I, I don't know what I'm looking at here. And he said, he lost his foot. <laughs> he smoked pot and now he's footless. <laughs> and that and made me laugh so hard. He was so earnest and sincere about it. Isn't the photo like an actual photo? <laughs> and it was like foot. super blurry and you couldn't. Yeah, I took it in the kitchen and then they just blurred the foot off. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And I love uh, also John M. Baum, the greatest writer in the world. Amen. Honest Amen. God, you guys. This guy. People say, do you, did you improvise on that show? I said, why would I improvise? I have John M. Baum writing yeah. uh, lines for me. And I, one of the things that I got to say, which, oh, God, I hope I remember this correctly, is although uh, Constant was, Constance was older than the rest of them, she hated old people. She was scared to death, and they were all old, and she hated being in there. And she was talking about um, old man's balls. She said, it's like two eggs in a sock. <laughs> And they don't really come anymore. They just, it's just little puffs of air. <laughs> puffs of dust. <laughs> oh, John N. Baum, ladies and gentlemen, author, Good author. <laughs> to, that, to that point, I think that's why when you asked that question before about like, how, how did it come out of the gate like so good, it's, it, there wasn't a, 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 I might be wrong, but there wasn't like a team of people writing it. You were writing it, you were writing it, and that was it, basically. Like John was, like you wrote some stuff, and then John was there every day, like working off his computer, writing the next episode. And so I think that there was a fully realized kind of vision of what the show was, and there weren't a lot of people coming in telling them what to do. It was like through One his voice. brain and then out, and, and we immediately got it and then did it. And, and this, I think this scene is the scene I felt like that we felt was where John had right immediately just really found the show. It was so exciting to shoot this scene because it went on for eight minutes. I mean, it's an incredibly long scene, violated all the rules. And uh, I think that was the moment I, when John wrote it, and we read it, and then when you all performed it so exquisitely, we're like, that's the show. That scene right there was yeah. the show. And I think, if I remember correctly, this is the second episode we shot because the Republican convention one is the second episode aired, but the third one we shot. So right, right away we were, I remember the, the first one was fun and great and everything, but we were getting our bearings. This one, while we were shooting it, we all looked at each other yeah. and were like, oh, this is great. Yeah, this I remember is so this fun. scene. We, I think the rest of us were like nearby or behind the monitor. I remember it was this scene. It was like, oh shit, this is actually really special. <laughs> wow, it better be good, guys. <laughs> It was such a powerful moment for us as a team. When you get a chance, go back and watch the first season. I you know what else I loved about it too, about doing this is that we had two directors. So you have one director in prep and then one, one guy directing you, Fred Savage and Brian. Brian 
Gordon. Gordon. So we, these guys were a part of the team as well. And, and you basically have one guy writing it, two people directing it. And there's something about that just kind of paring it down to a couple of voices, you know, kind of or several voices singing in harmony. So, Isn't that beautiful what I just said? Yes, it <laughs> is. Yeah. So next is Ken's pick. Does that work? Hmm? Oh, yeah. There she is. There she is. Sensation. Oh Sensation. God. At Ward's after party. But now, uh, I was, I think I picked this, uh, uh, oh, not this scene. It wasn't a scene. I was picking the Martin yes. scene. Oh, yeah. I, I with, picked this picture just in case you did, guys didn't already tell Stormy oh, okay. Daniels. You wanted to story. see Stormy Daniels. I get it. All right. All right. So, <laughs> I, so, one of my favorite scenes in the entire uh, series is Martin and Beth Dover and Martin about to get laid. <laughs> And but he he he's too proud when what is it sci -fi, hard sci-fi and what how, fantasy fantasy is about bullshit dragons yeah it's, about, it's like the difference between fantasy and hard sci-fi and she and, and like they're vibing and then she says something that's more hard sci-fi than fantasy and he can't, opposite or the opposite get and it Martin, right it's just an incredible thing where Martin just like he hears it and I think he's like has a shot and he's like. And he takes a drink, he's like, and he can't help himself, and he corrects her, and then he blows the whole thing. And it is just the most beautiful scene, and it's so sad, and it's performed so well. I just love that scene. I, it's so beautifully written, I just love it. Do you remember shooting that scene? And, and you were like, a, did you remember, sorry, do you remember shooting that scene? Go on. <laughs> what was it like? <laughs> It was fun. Beth is an incredibly talented and funny actress, so it was Ew. fun to get to play with her. Whoa. Um, to get to play with her. I don't get it. Um, That's so anyway, your we friend's play, wife. What? We played, we played around a lot together. Hey, What's hey, 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 hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm oh, saying whoa. we played a lot together. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 You, you're saying Joe's you played here. with each other a lot. We played. Together. Hey! With each other. Yeah. With each other, we played. It's a Whoa. different time, Tick tock, tick tock, yeah. tick tock. Oh. 28 minutes left. How long can this bit go? <laughs> um, it was fun. It was, I mean, every, every day, this was maybe the only job where every time we were wrapped, we stuck around. This was a fun place just to be, and, and that speaks volume to the work and how much fun it was to work here that you wanted to come and stick around afterward when, you know, especially Jane, had a lot of other shit to do. Yeah, I was a busy, busy woman and wanted all over the place, but... <laughs> and I, I'm also one of those people... I, I'm in bed at 9 o'clock when I'm not working, so if I'm working till 10 or 11, I'm, like, in deep REM by the time we're done. <laughs> and um, I, would, I would go out. I would go out with these yeah. clowns. We had so much fun. Where did the idea of Ron having a big dick come from? <laughs> I don't remember. Where did this that make come sense? From? <laughs> Just a giant hog. <laughs> Just so you know, that's the medium one that they brought from that's the, crazy. of the props. <laughs> yeah, one one memorable story about that episode was that our uh, our props uh, master got got pulled over. Fold. It folds <laughs> out. Delivering the props to set. I think she was in an accident. Oh, in an accident, yes. In which an ambulance arrived and the whole deal. And she has all the trophies of, like, like the dildo trophies that are being handed out at the awards. Oh, my gosh. And in her open trunk um, while getting arrested. Yeah, or not getting arrested, getting... <laughs> She's then arrested. It's a tragic story. Was she impaled by the trophies? How did the... Give us a play-by-play -play of the accident. Stop saying clay, Martin. You did it again. I like to play hey, with hey, people. Hey. Jeez. <laughs> Season one, episode six, Taylor Stiltskins, Sweet 16. Adam, this was your choice. Oh, yeah. Look at your hair. No, yeah. <laughs> wow. All I can think about Out of control. You look like a hedgehog. It does look, look like a hedgehog. That. I look it looks like a hat. <laughs> <laughs> um 
this also, uh, I think either this or the Gutenberg birthday were my favorites, but this was, again, uh, early on when it all was really congealing. Gross, sorry. <laughs> it was coming together. No, no one jumps on him for that, but I say play. <laughs> Fuck off. Adam, don't say congeal, okay? Our play was starting to congeal. Oh. Um, and it's a really uh, sweet, I love the end of this, how we, <laughs> the, the popular, I haven't seen in a long time, but the popular kids and we're over with the outcasts at the end. It just felt right. We all really felt that way. Um, it was, and then we were on the Queen Mary shooting yeah. it the whole time. It was so fun. Um, again, we were all, you know, it was like the middle of, right in the middle of the season, we we're all in this like buzz of loving what we were doing. Um, and it couldn't, I couldn't wait to get to the set. I remember shooting on the Queen Mary, it was in Long Beach, so it's like an hour drive to get up extra early. I would we, get there like 40 minutes early every morning because I was, I was so excited to see everyone and, and work on the show. So this was particularly fun for whatever reason. This was a fun one too for your character because it was, it, there was a little hope, like there were like two or three That's or right. four after, prior JK, to that where you were right. just sort of like, oh, I'm fucking stuck in this thing. Right. And then there was an opportunity for you to get a, a gig and I think that that was also that's fun to right. watch your character go through that. That's right. J.K. was his big producer, and he gets me to debase myself and say, are we having fun yet, <laughs> a bunch of times. And it was particularly humiliating. Yeah, that's right. It's Wasn't great. Kevin Hart in that episode, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he was. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I got high with Kevin Hart. I mean, I didn't get high with, but we acted like we were getting high. Again, Dolby Theater, if... Uh... <laughs> yeah. And you got uh, Brecken to do this role, Brecken and I Meyer. believe he just said, I just want to do Matthew McConaughey. That's yeah, what I he did do. a Matthew McConaughey <laughs> impression for the role. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, one, of the, one of the moments we retell about this episode all the time is that originally the script said that Ken, uh, that Ron Donald wanted to uh, uh, open his own soup plantation. And, <laughs> and we... Uh, we got a super cracker sweatshirt <laughs> yeah. or t-shirt in the front row. He, he, so John had written a whole string of this jokes with Kevin Hart talking heartbreaking. about breaking. We wrote multiple episodes with yeah. soup plantation jokes. And <laughs> and so this, this day Kevin Hart was going to come in and do all these jokes about why he wouldn't set foot into a soup plantation and somebody at Stars decided that we could get some uh, some of that sweet product placement cash. And so approach Soup Plantation about paying to have their name in an episode. And they said, fuck no. In fact, don't use our name in an you episode. And so John, on the eve of shooting this scene, had to turn Soup Plantation, had to make those jokes all work and came up with Super Cracker, which... It's so great. It was, it was, that was a fine moment. It's... Profound, it's such a profoundly stupid idea for a restaurant. <laughs> it's perfect for, for Ron. Season one, episode eight, celebrate Ricky Sargulesh. Sargulesh? Um, John and Robbie picked that one. Uh, you wanna talk about it? Well, I mean, you know, I feel like for me there were two specific things about this. The first was, it felt like the most emblematic of everything that made the show work, um, you know, when we felt like it was really kind of clicking on all cylinders, in, just in the sense that, you know, the script is fine, but everyone was, like, elevating it so much in their performances. Um, Steven Weber, I guess, was the neighbor of the director, um, and he was just like, oh, yeah, I'll pop over and see if he's busy. Um, and so we just found out that he was free to come do it, and none of us had ever met him or anything. Um, and so he just kind of showed up. I tried to say hello to him, but apparently he had glued his eyes shut and couldn't move his face. And so I was worried that he hated being there already, and so I was very nervous and everything, and then he just went berserk. And so it just had this quality of just like all the things kind of like this is, you know, what makes it great is when all the just 
pieces come together and just everything just kind of, you know, is this barely controlled chaos, which it kind of was, because, you know, everyone was kind of really going for it in this particular episode. And I think, you know, just the other thing was I think some of these, the bit with a, you know, this gangster demanding that Henry give his pitch line over and over and over again <laughs> was I think, you know, it was one of the first bits that we kind of started tossing around like way back when and it kind of found its way into this particular episode which ended up working like vastly better than we ever thought it would. So like I can't help but always be fond of this one. Yeah, that was that, that moment when Henry is having to do Are We Having Fun Yet over and over and Casey he's in a fight with Casey and yet she comes over in the middle of it and he has to put his arm around her and pretend that they're, she's his fiance. It, 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 that moment when I first saw the cut of it made me laugh like nothing else. And I, like I, that was like the high point for me when I, when I saw that. And Constance Carmel had done a movie called Dingleberry. Dingleberry. <laughs> that all the mob guys were a big fan of. <laughs> I recognize you from, you know, getting out of the stream and wrapping yourself in silks. And I say, you saw Dingleberry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Season one, episode nine, James Rolfe, high school 20th reunion. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Which Lizzie can and Dan mentioned. Yes. Love the throwing up. I mean, that's the, that was the thing. Like, Ken on the ground, throwing up yelling, call an ambulance. <laughs> and just like being there with like the hose that was spraying the vomit, it, there was so much vomit. And so it was like, it, it's, I laughed so hard when I, I think that's the, I mean, yes, of course, the, I think everybody's collective favorite is maybe the Gutenberg episode, but this shit, it, it was like, oh, that's, you're a genius. You're a genius. That's genius. The end. And I think this was the, uh, the height of darkness. Like we, I mean, one of the, stars wasn't always thrilled that we, most of the time, none of the characters ever won, but, but they were behind that and they knew that's what? what we wanted to do. But man, this episode is about as dark and bleak as it can possibly get. Sure. <laughs> we thought we'd gone too far when we had done it. Yeah, but also the, like, uh, going back to his reunion, thinking that they're all gonna be so impressed because he's the, like the captain of the catering team. <laughs> oh, it's catering the, the reunion. reunion. <laughs> I just feel like those moments are really effective, but you see them in coming of age, like d during the moment that is like in high school, you would maybe see that in a movie, but not now. I just made it so much, like 10 times more pathetic and wonderful. That's just, right. In Oh, I sorry. just love remembering how injured you were the next day from all your vomiting. <laughs> you were that committed. There was a lot of convulsing, yes. I was in, it hurt the next day. <laughs> I think you would think in a, in a comedy, something, you know, where Ron is at his own high school reunion, things aren't going well. Like you were saying, Dan, by the end of that episode, everything would be fine. He would reconnect with someone. He would somehow find a way to, to feel better. But what Lizzie was talking about him saying, call an ambulance while he's vomiting. That's how the episode ends. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, Molly Parker's devastated in tears. She's yeah. crying. That's oh, a, yeah. Like, yes. yeah. Weeping. Oh, because, oh, I remember her thing. To, oh, God. Molly episode. Parker was great. Yeah, every single person who's come up on the screen is like, oh, right, they're amazing. And I mean, we, uh, we got into a, a disagreement uh, with Fred Savage, who directed both this and the Porn Awards. And uh, the disagreement was in the Porn Awards, like, we showed, like, 15 frames of Ron's dick. And, and, and Fred wanted, like, eight frames of Ron's dick. Like, I don't think we, he we've wanted We've completely eight. oversold it. We've completely oversold it. You can't see that much. And then I'm like, but when we did this, I'm like, but Fred, you, you gave us two hefty bags full of vomit on the ground. Like, <laughs> we're not a show that traffics in underselling it. Um, I just remembered something that has, it doesn't apply to this, but I just have to share it. When he gets that big dick out, and then you are so startled, you back it to the dumpster. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> that was so oh, 
So it is the episode that you've, we've mentioned a few times, but it's time to get there. Yeah. The goo. Um, though I do feel like uh, if we're going to talk about this, we should have uh, someone else here. Oh, Steve. boy. Ooh. It is a- We already yeah. said hi to Steve, so that's why he didn't hug us. We already, <laughs> backstage, we said hi. Well, I was, I was sitting back there. I didn't want to come out because this is just so great to listen to this. And they, and they said, oh, you're, you're on. I go, no, 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 not yet, not yet. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, so so how, how did this happen? How did, Steve, how did you get on the show? How did you guys get Steve on the show? Oh, boy, it was so, it was in, they were, e- he had seen a billboard and had emailed Rob well, think, like five minutes ago. And Rob just wrote back, like, hey, <laughs> like, we have yeah. an idea. Yeah, we, um, the most fun we have, I mean, I don't mean the show in total, but those of us who help write it, I mean, John writes the bulk of it, but we get together at the beginning of the year and come up with what are our 10 parties, and we start throwing ideas up on, on a board. And l- literally, we had just come up with this idea of a surprise Steve Gutenberg birthday party. <laughs> Well, without Steve Gutenberg. Uh, no, 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 no. Because we were just looking for parties that didn't have extras because no. they were our biggest expense. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's true. But we had Steve Gutenberg. I mean, that, the, I, Steve Gutenberg was already the idea. And I hadn't heard... I mean, Steve had done uh, a ton of season two Veronica Mars, so we knew Steve, like, when we thought of, okay, who, would, who can we go to who would be great... Uh, and we had Steve, and then, like, five minutes later, Steve emails me a photo from Times Square of a big party down billboard and said, hey, man, congratulations. And I read back, hey, <laughs> we just put you in an episode, so I hope you're available. <laughs> well, I was, um, I was walking through Times Square, so I saw the billboard, and, you know, I wanted to send Rob a note. And... Um, and later on, you know, you, you said, hey, we've got this episode with you. And I did Veronica Mars. So I thought, oh, no, not another pedophile. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I'm going to get typecast. It's just terrible. Uh, so uh, <laughs> luckily, um, and then, you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, knew, that, I, I knew that it was going to be great. And um, uh, I was really psyched to shoot the show. And, you know, I'm a fan of everybody. So, uh, so I was just, you know, thrilled to be there. And... Um, and shoot, it was, like everybody here said, it was a really lot of fun. Everybody here are nice people, and when you sort, well, almost everybody is really a nice person. And, uh, but you know, if you, when you mix nice people, talent, great script, you know, place to shoot it, something good's gonna happen. You sound like the Steve Gutenberg in the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that guy. But um, I, I was just thinking about that scene with Ken when you're in the, um, uh, the aquarium uh, where the ice is, and, you know, you're kind of there, I go, oh, no, 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 that's really expensive. You know, there, there was just some, some really funny stuff in that. And people come up to me all the time and say, your party down was so funny, so funny. And I've you know, seen the whole show, and every episode is really funny to me. So I still go, really? It was really that funny? And they go, yeah, it was amazing. I go, okay, great. What is, uh, it seemed like a big for all, what do you guys remember from shooting it? Uh, for, 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 for me, when I heard that Steve Gutenberg was doing the episode, I was very excited because, uh, and I, told, I think I told you that week, um, growing up, Diner was a movie that I watched, I can't tell you how many times, and Steve in, in Diner, his performance in Diner is so... Uh, beautiful, and there's such an ease to it, and for me, it's one of the reasons I wanted to be an actor, and I talked to you about a moment, a very small moment in that movie, where you get up, and um, Tim Daly uh, wakes you up, and you go and brush your teeth, but you don't put any toothpaste on it. You just brush it real quick, and you throw the thing down, and I always think about that moment as an actor, because I think it's such a specific thing, and uh, to, to just a guy who doesn't give a shit about putting the toothpaste on and he just throws a thing, and, I, and that, 
that moment and your performance in that movie and that movie as a whole uh, it, is, is one of the main reasons that uh, I wanted to act so badly. Yeah. So when I saw you on set, it was a huge uh, moment for me. Yeah, no, we talked about that. It was, it was, it was terrific. And then, and then you and I got to have lunch in New York. That's right. Yeah. Which was delightful. Yeah, it was really great. And Which was like, not, check it off the bucket list. Yeah, what did, what did you guys eat? Uh, food. food. Food? Yeah, mostly food. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. So this is the, the episode where you have the people do what they ostensibly have said that they are. You have the, your actors acting, the writing. Um, how did you approach that scene where it's basically like, Adam, uh, be good at acting? <laughs> Fake acting. Yes, yes. Would be good. I, Everyone else be, I guess, okay at acting. I remember um, uh, reading the script. I, I remember all of us reading this one as the season two ones were coming in. And this, I mean, they're, they're all great. This one was just a perfect piece of writing, right? Weren't we all just like, holy shit. Yeah. Gutenberg. This is <laughs> perfect. Um, and part of it was going into the the reading um, of the was it a screenplay Roman screenplay yeah that's what it was right. yeah and and that and how all of us all, all of our roles in the screenplay within the show kind of reflected how we were feeling and it, it was all perfect and, and when you guys were I can act you out of this room and <laughs> I can act the you know the words were so I can. I can, what was the line, something about, I can act better than your feel. I have more feelings than you, or you were up upping each other. It was I don't just, remember. Was one feeling tied behind my yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, one feeling tied behind my back. That was a great line, just a great line. <laughs> also, because we didn't have extras, it really was the first time that we got to be just us yeah. together at like the perfect time when we wanted to just spend all of our minutes together. And Chris, Chris Mans Plass was in this episode too, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you, I don't want to embarrass you here, but you walked up to Chris Plass and I, Steve, and you said, um, so how's the show going? Are you guys um, getting a lot of ladies? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. and, I, and I just remember thinking, oh, he has no idea that only he and Megan Mullally have ever seen our show. <laughs> And by, by the way, Martin has been over to uh, my apartment for a spaghetti and meatballs. It's true. Spaghetti and meatballs. Do you go to the fall? That's which my girlfriend at the time no. made great. And oh no, did I make the spaghetti? I made the spaghetti and meatballs. It was homemade. Well, I made the spaghetti. It was and made by the yes. fucking goot. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, Ken. Next time you'll come to the apartment. Sorry. What'd you guys eat? <laughs> oh God, here we go. Sorry. Um, since we're running out of time, I'm going to skip the next one. Everyone's here, and want to make sure we can get to this one. We worked so Don hard on big that deal, one. Which was, uh, Megan, that your was... pick. Yeah. Yeah, I, the thing I remember most about it was that I was deathly ill with the flu. I had 103 degree fever when we shot, and I had all, I had to talk really fast, and I had all these lines. <laughs> And it wasn't fun. <laughs> but it was fun. But I was out. You know how you, when you feel like you're not even there, like you're just on another planet? That's how I felt the whole time we were shooting that week. I'm surprised that I didn't infect all of you. <laughs> a coked up Megan Mullally is a good Megan Mullally <laughs> yeah. to watch. It really is. That's the only one I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm coked up right now. <laughs> is there another one? <laughs> I tried to dress like a cater waiter today. I'm my closest approximation. Um, yeah, but what, uh, what else about that episode? A lot of extras, yeah. Which one was it? Paul Shear was in it. It was, oh, uh, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, yeah. Uh, your uh, writing partner is successful. Right. I don't remember the name of the episode. I think it's your writing partner is successful. Someone Hi. did coke off of our um, star's need for boobs. So we, someone did coke off some boobs in that episode, I believe. <laughs> Wasn't that every episode? Oh, no. I did the whole so um, I want to talk a little bit about the finale, which I believe was shot not knowing for sure is going to be the last episode, though there may be some inkling. Um, and specifically the final shot, which is there Henry is, he is going to audition. Now that it is the final shot of at least the show, how, how do we all feel about 
how the show ended. Or anyone, how does anyone feel about it? <laughs> I hope Sad. It ha yeah, I hope it hasn't <laughs> for good here. Yeah, like, I mean, the reason I haven't seen the show in years is because I know it'll make me sad to watch it. I haven't, I mean, I, it's been so long since I've seen it, but I do, the, the final episode Ken directed, and it was so deeply fun. Jane came back because it was her wedding. It was, I remember being really, there was a scene where, Jane, you're riding off saying goodbye to all of us. Yeah. And, and I had to say, I had a line like, um, I don't remember what the line was, but I had a hard time saying it because I was starting to cry because I felt like the show was gonna end. And it was something about she'll have a good life or it's hard, some, some profound thing. Do you remember what the line was? It was tough to say. And Ken was directing doing an incredible, literally watching Ken direct and his storyline in that episode was particularly arduous and it was inspiring watching this guy run around <laughs> back and forth um, and it was so, so fun and it, an apt ending. I think we all kind of had a feeling in our gut that this was gonna be it. Yeah. Because then you took that other show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Yeah, and we that's, really that's when we knew really it was knew. Over. Yeah, that was a tip off for sure. <laughs> well, that's yeah. not how okay. it went. Down. That, that isn't. That is not how it went. I Did mean, you that... cry at the end of <laughs> that show too, Adam. <laughs> I want to do it again. Can we do the show again? Yes, please. So let, let's talk about the, the movie that I feel like you guys would, in every interview for until about 2013, you'd be like, oh, we're definitely doing a movie. They've already written the movie. Um, it is now 2019. <laughs> is there, have you talked about it in any more recent years? Do we feel like it's a realistic possibility? Would you want to do a movie? Where do you guys all are on doing something again? I don't know about a movie, but... I'd, I'd do anything with this group. I mean, this is really the nicest, funniest, best group of people that I ever worked with. It's I would really do like a, a cool web series or something. <laughs> I would. I think you already five did. Five minutes, kind of a thing. Five minute episode. Queeby, John, Rob, Dan, what do you guys think? Oof. Uh, I don't think a movie's in the cards, but uh, yeah. I it think they're. You know, I think in the next year or two, maybe we'll try and explore another way to. To get the gang back together. Yeah. Are you are you just saying that for an applause? Because that was yes. fucking cheap. <laughs> so I mean, regardless, you guys have, have all been really busy since you've had all really great careers. Where does Party Down sit in terms of the things that you've done? Number one. Number number one, absolutely. Number one. Number three. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie Kaplan. <laughs> no, number one. Number one. For real. Yeah, number one. It's the most fun. It's the most fun. Steve? Uh, number uh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> the, thi the thing to remember here <laughs> is that while these guys were all having all of this fun, Dan and I had a show on ABC at the same time, and we're having the worst times of our lives. Oh, that's and, right. And we would... We would occasionally get done with our grueling, god-awful day and wander over, wander over and spend a few minutes on the set of Party Down going, oh, this looks like fun. <laughs> um, so, in, in, like, I'm very proud of the show and certainly um, had a hand in it, but it is, lar that's largely, John was the I got to have writer. fun. I had more yeah. fun than you did. <laughs> I made more money. <laughs> Yes. You know I'm what? kidding. That was what a dick thing to say. I just <laughs> wanted the punchline. But punch you did. Line. You did make more money. Yeah. 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 You speak the truth. That's why I'm sad. You know what episode that I always forget about, but was extraordinary just before we finish? I want to say the the one that Wayne directed, the theater group. The one Not on your wife. Talk oh, about. God damn, that was great. <laughs> that was a fun one. It was yeah. so fun. Kyle, you thatch-headed wastrel. <laughs> <laughs> was that magnificent? 
Yes. Oh, that yes. was magnificent. Oh. That magnificent. Oh, yeah. Any other last memories before we, we wrap it up? Anybody? It wasn't really Adam's fault that this show ended. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> Thanks, Lizzie. <You're> <laughs> Who wants my wig? Does anybody want it or is it too gross? She got all dressed up. She's not even raising her hand. Oh, no. But, so she doesn't want You're a party it. down outfit, but... Oh, that's she know. deserves it. No. Give it to the party down outfit. You raised your hand first, and you're a girl. Oh. You guys, you can cut it in two. Wait, we should show how. Wait, let me just see it for one second. Look how gross it is. It's just so, it's so shiny and weird. You're welcome. From, <laughs> yeah, I went to Hollywood Boulevard. I don't think I was reimbursed. <laughs> it's okay. I'm on Will and Grace. <laughs> Party down. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.